So my name is Amanda Drake. I am a social worker. I have a bachelor's in social work from Wright State University and a master's in social work from the University of Cincinnati. I am also independently licensed to practice social work at the state level. So I have a presentation first and then I'll kind of talk about my journey from Carroll. I did graduate here in 1997. So the PowerPoint, I hope it works. <laughs> if you want to be a social worker. So social work is actually one of the fastest growing professions in the United States currently. Um, it actually says it projects an 11% employment growth between 2018 and 2028. In particularly in the Dayton area, it's about 15% currently. Um, so social work is wherever there is people and there's people everywhere. So if you were looking to get into working with people, helping people, social work is definitely the job for you. Let's see, what is social work? So social work is a profession that's devoted to helping people function the best that they can in their current environment. Again, so if you wanna work with people, people are everywhere, this is kind of what we do. Promote social welfare, connect people to resources, help people of all backgrounds overcome unique challenges and advocating for social and economic justice for members of the community and embodying a professional code of ethics. So social work as a licensed profession, we do have a national board that we have to be accountable to. We have a state board that we're accountable to and a code of ethics that we have to abide by at all times when we're dealing with people. Let's see, social work skills. So these are the things, if you have these skills or want to learn them, these are the four basic tenets of social work. So it's communication. It's talking to people, but listening. The art of listening is probably the number one thing in social work. It is learning how to just let people talk. And 90% of the time, people can figure out their own solutions. So listening is empowering people to process whatever's happening, whatever's going on in their life, in their situation, and guide them with your listening skills to their own conclusions. Um, let's see, critical thinking. So to think outside the box. Every single person has a unique situation, and every situation has its own unique challenges. And we live in a world with ever-growing issues and ever-shrinking resources. And so thinking outside of the box and helping to find unique solutions for both people on an individual basis, but also on a large-scale basis is very critical. Empathy, ability to identify with and understand another person's experience and point of view. Being able to empathize and sympathize with people is so important. People need to know that you care about them, that you want what's best for them, that you're there to help them, and you're not just there because it's your job, right? People need somebody to connect to, and oftentimes that's not somebody they actually know. They need a third party person to come in and provide some perspective and just to provide some support. So there's also time management. So as you know, with any job, there's always a lot to do. However, with social work in particular, there is always a lot to do. And so be able to prioritize, be able to figure out what to do first, what to do second, what you can do tomorrow, and what you have to do today is incredibly important because you need to figure out how you can be there for the person, but then also do the parts of your job like documenting, connecting resources, talking to other professionals. Social work, um, a part of the communication skills is that we are often the connector, of, connector for people to other services. And so we have to be able to talk to and provide information and recommendations to other professionals as well. So where are the social workers? They are everywhere, literally everywhere. 
community agencies for things like resource assistance. People are struggling to pay bills. They're struggling to access food. They're struggling to access daycare, all sorts of things. Hospitals and hospice and home health. This has probably been the biggest growth in social work is the medical piece. You've always probably heard of the generation that's just getting older, that would be my parents. And there was a huge baby boom in the 50s and 60s, so a lot of those, um, a lot of those people are getting older and they need more attention. And so there's medical social workers and hospitals is actually required by Medicare and by federal law now. Um, that's one of the things that's probably happened in the last decade is that social work is now recognized as one of the most important pieces in the medical practice in order for compliance and for with medical treatment, access to medical care, and of course mental health and palliative care, which is end of life care about hospice. And then mental health agencies. So we are not counselors, we don't get a counseling license, but we do get a license, which I'll talk about, so we can provide therapy, we can provide mental health services. Um, and in fact, that's actually my practice is with mental health. Um, nursing homes, again, kind of in the medical, every nursing home is required to have a social worker, so it's another job opportunity. Jails, detention centers, and courts, Oftentimes, that's we are advocates for people. We are advocates for victims of crimes, domestic violence, um, you know, for the mentally ill, for those that have been abused, to make sure that the courts understand their point of view, what's happened. Um, there's child and adult welfare agencies evaluating abuse and neglect. That's actually where I got my start. There is foster care. Oh, how do I go back? I don't know. <laughs> there we go. Schools, so this is another huge one. I actually don't know if you guys have a social worker here or not, but most public schools have a requirement to have a social worker in the schools now um, in order to address any needs, behavioral, mental health, access to resources, in order to ensure that kids are getting the education that they need and that they deserve. Domestic violence agencies staffed almost entirely by social workers, as are shelters. And the military, because I added that because we live here by the base, they employ a lot of social workers on the base for a variety of the same types of jobs um, as civilians. So there's actually a lot of opportunity here to work for the military as a civilian. As of today, there's 150 job openings just in the Dayton area because they're just expanding and growing um, as the need for social workers and, the reckon and to be recognized at the federal level for mandates to employ social workers. So the Bachelors of Social Work program is a generalist practice to prepare students to work in all populations. So if you had a bachelor's in social work, you could get a job at any of those, a starting out job at any of those agencies. The social work program has internship opportunities to explore areas of interest. And so you get two opportunities. You get like a short internship to of, of your typically, depending on which college you attend, of your choice. And then you get another opportunity for a long internship, which is in your senior year, for what you think you're most interested in. And then the Bachelors of Social Work prepares you for licensure. So the social work practice is overseen by the State of Ohio Counselor and Social Work Board. We do have to take a test after we graduate to become licensed. But actually, you can only call yourself a social worker if you have a license in the state of Ohio. A lot of people say they do social work, they work in social services, but you actually have to have a license. That actually provides us an opportunity um, for higher pay because we are specialized, we're a very specialized field. So that is good, it hasn't always been that way. Ultimately, the role of social work is about helping people, 
oops, especially in vulnerable populations. And then a Bachelor's of Social Work program specifically will prepare you to understand how to navigate difficult situations and help people cope with the problems in their lives. That's all I have for my PowerPoint, but ultimately, everybody is gonna have problems at some point, uh, from birth until death. Social work is involved in every area, every stage of life. Um, and so, if you are into helping, this is an amazing opportunity, and it provides you a variety of job opportunities. So, in counseling, it's mental health, it's to do talk therapy, to do cognitive behavioral therapy. A social work program actually provides you with a broad range of skills that you can then take into the workforce. That doesn't kind of pigeonhole you into one thing. It provides you the opportunity to find kind of what your niche is, what your interest, what population you wanna work with, and then be able to serve them. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Questions? If you don't, it's okay. You said something about getting like a counseling license versus like an actual like other kind of license. What's like the difference between those? Two? So a counseling license, so to be a mental health counselor or therapist, you get a counseling license. So you get a counseling degree, which is actually a Bachelor of Arts in Counseling. The social work program, you also can get a license. You get a social work license only having completed a bachelor's of social work. So you, it's the specific degree that you are getting. A mental health, a counseling degree is specific to mental health. So your curriculum is geared towards therapy and therapy all the time. So your mental health diagnoses, your different types of therapy, um, and what you're going to do with that. A social work degree provides you with what they call this generalist practice and just these basic skills, like the critical thinking, the communication skills, all of these life skills that you can take into a variety of different jobs. So for example, to work at Children's Services as a social worker, you need a social work degree and you need a social work license. Um, one of the things is, is in order to be a counselor, you need a license. It's required by law to be a social worker in these agencies because of federal mandates and the recognition of social work, you need a social work license. Unfortunately, they're not interchangeable. Social workers can do a little bit more than what counselors can do. Um, that's just my own bias because I'm not a counselor. So, but they both have, they both, per, provide licensure and social workers can provide therapy. A lot of social workers do provide therapy. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Um, do you think it's also like a good option if you like want to study like psychology or sociology for like a bachelor's and then do like social work for a master's? So, y yes. So with, well, so if you got a psychology undergraduate, a BA degree, you can go get your master's. It is, um, most social workers tend to get their master's nowadays. It's, it's, a lot, it's a lot like teaching, everybody gets their bachelor's, they eventually enter the job force and then get their master's degree. You can get your master's with any type of undergraduate degree. If you have a bachelor's in social work, you kind of it's easier of course because you skip some classes that you took you know you had core classes for social work specifically it's probably about a year difference um, to get your master's degree in social work so i will say if you ever plan and you think that you want to do social work that is what i would recommend psychology and sociology are amazing mental health so psychology is my specialty it's what my master's is in. My master's is in social work with a concentration in mental health, so psychology. Is social work provides you with a very specific outcome on what types of jobs you can have. So if you're looking at psychology and you look at, okay, so what do I want to do with this degree? What, what am I interested in? Who do I want to help? Who do I want to serve? 
and um, you can always get a psychology minor. Um, but social work, I feel, is a very, if you're doing psychology, even sociology, which were also, again, my favorite things in college, are the social work degree. I don't want to say it's pr practical, but it is because it provides you job opportunities. It provides you with a licensure. It provides you with a generalist practice to start. So it's a very good foundational degree. Um, a lot of people go and you, you can go and get a master's in psychology. You can get um, a lot of people who have psychology degrees do very similar jobs in these agencies. They just don't do the social work job because you have to be required for a license. So there is a little bit of a difference. Like at Children's Services, they do hire people with liberal arts degrees, so sociology, criminal justice, psychology. But when it comes to doing certain tasks within the agency, only social workers are allowed to do those things. Um, so I would say social work is a better way to go. This is my own bias. Um, but you can provide the same type of education. I mean, it really is very similar. And if you, because in social work, you do kind of get to pick these electives that are towards like a concentration. Um, so the concentrations are children and families, mental health, and then health and gerontology, which is um, treating people who are over the age of 60. Um, there's certainly a lot of room for a minor, actually, in one of those psychology, sociology, criminal justice. Yes. Okay, yeah. I have two. The question is, so to be able to work like, in a jail setting, do you guys like, actually give um, like, therapy, cognitive therapy to so we do. A lot of what happens in jails and like detention centers for minors is evaluation, like assessment evaluation. We see where people are, what kind of needs they have, but a lot of the population that comes into those settings, they're struggling with something. They're struggling with mental health. They're struggling with the history of trauma. They're struggling with poverty. They're struggling with something. And so we do, we do, we do what they consider to be brief therapy. So we're not going to see them for a year, every week for a year, but they do assessments and evaluations and they do do what is considered to be brief counseling and provide what they can while, while they're in there and then try to connect them back to the community with the goal of obviously of rehabilitation and, you know, recidivism. Um, is huge, you know, people reoffend, and a lot of times it is about lack of resources, it's about lack of uh, understanding of, you know, their own mental health and what, what situations they have. So there are all of the jails and detention centers and prisons, they employ social workers. Okay. And how many years did you go to college? So I actually went to college, I'll get to that, for six years for my bachelor's because I actually originally went to school because I wanted to be a history teacher. And then in college, I worked in a nursing home as a part-time job and I realized then having um, got to know the social worker and got to know kind of the environment, I decided I wanted to be a social worker and not a history teacher. So then I had to change my major and finish out my bachelor's degree. Um, and then I did, I got a job at Children's Services right out of college. They did actually a reimbursement program, so that's another thing that you could always look into. There are, because of the need for social workers in all of these areas, there is oftentimes reimbursement, like, hey, we'll pay you, pay 10 grand of your tuition if you come work for us for two or three years. So I actually went to, I did the university partnership program. I graduated from Wright State and I went directly into children's services down towards Cincinnati. And they um, paid about 10, 10 grand of my tuition. Um, and then they actually offered the opportunity to get my master's and I went part time. So I worked full time at children's services and I did part time. Um, to get my master's degree at the University of Cincinnati. Um, so that is one of the things is there's a lot of job opportunities with the social work degree. So the agencies are really, really helpful in making that happen. 
um, either through tuition reimbursement, flexibility for classes, offering. When I worked at Children's Services, they actually had classes at the agency. Um, because the goal is, A, they need licensed social workers. They need actual social workers to meet goals that they have required by the state and the government. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity for that. Any other questions? Um, I have one. Mm -hmm. so one of the things, one of my concerns is I kind of want to go to Ohio University. Okay. And they say that their like social work program has like a really like rural focus. So sure. Um, but like I'm not sure if I want to work in. Right, like stay there. in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So I totally get that. So again, this. <laughs> is I think that even if it has a real fo focus per se, because that's where their opportunities are for internships, the thing about people in general is people are the same across situations, across environments. So the skills that you're going to learn, how to actively listen, how to critically think, all of those things you can take from a rural environment, you know, at a school with 50 kids to a school, the, the skills that you learn are very applicable anywhere. So you could go from, there would be no issue going to Ohio, you know, Ohio University, working in Athens, and then moving to Cincinnati and going to Cincinnati and being a social worker. That's the one thing, it is very universal, right? So the skills and the things that you were taught about, you know, 10 year old kids who are from divorced homes are the same typically of 10 year old divorced kids from a different area, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of universal skills to it all. So Ohio University, so I think a social work degree in all is applicable across wherever you go. Um, same as like a psychology degree is you're gonna learn about mental health, you know, mental health, like depression, is depression is depression, right? You know, and everybody's different. So every every person you ever gonna meet is is different and has different needs and things process differently and affects them differently. And so it's those basic underlying skills that you need to deal with every single person you meet. Every everything's gonna be different. Um, that's the thing about the internship too, is you have live practice to kind of see how it goes. Um, to practice your skills before you're actually out into the workforce. So, and that opportunity is available at, at, all, at all schools. Anybody else? Okay. Hi, yes. So you mentioned, you know, there's a lot of school involved and the field has changed sure. a lot over the last years. And these guys are all, you know, anywhere from four to seven years from actually being social workers what they ultimately pursue. How do you see your, the career of social work changing over the next seven years to decades when they'd actually be? Oh, work? gosh. So I, I think it's just going to grow. I mean, it's been exponentially. So I um, currently am the clinical coordinator for Kettering Health, the entire network for the behavioral health team. So I can tell you just five years ago, we had about... 20 employees, um, I now supervise 46. And that's just in a very short period of time. The um, climate of the world per se has really put an emphasis on getting people's needs met and what that means. How do you get your needs met? Where do you go to get your needs met? Whether it be because you are feeling depressed or you can't pay your bills or you just got divorced or you just lost your job. Like all of these things um, and over the course of the last several years they've really recognized the skills that social workers bring to the table in relating to people. I mean I think that's probably the biggest thing is how we relate to people and we provide them the opportunity and empower them to create their own solutions. And so it is just going to grow, like Dayton, for example, Dayton Police Department just um, started a, so a social work division within the department. 
Obviously, that's with you know the climate of the world's going on. They've decided like, oh, we need somebody who can relate to people better than the cops are relating to people. And so, I think the job opportunities are going to be exponential. I think that you'd be able to find the area of interest that works for you. I do think one of the benefits of social work as opposed to counseling is helping people is hard. Listening to people is hard. And one of the things with social work is that you can still help people, but there's opportunities for other areas, right? So I started my work in children's services. I worked there for seven years. It was a difficult job at times, and I was like, okay, I need something different. I wanna help people, I wanna stay in this field, and I went into medical social work. And so it offers you the opportunity to grow as a person, to grow as a social worker, and to still help people, right? To still provide and serve your community. So it's just gonna be amazing. Social workers, we're on our way up, <laughs> for sure. Any other questions? I have a question. Yes. I know you super sympathize, typically. I um, do. On average, the social workers that work <clears throat> with you, what is their work-life balance like? How many patients do they see? Is it a typical eight-hour day? Um, can you talk about that work-life balance? Can't, I can't. <laughs> So I actually work and I supervise um, hospital employees. So hospitals are 24 seven. So that's the thing about social work is, and so there is some variety. My um, workers actually work 12 hour shifts. So they work three 12s. So they have four days off, they work three 12s. Um, so that is one of the things is that you have to learn. So when you're out there wanting to help everybody all the time, you have to also learn how to help yourself and you have to decide, you know, make boundaries and say, okay, I'm gonna do my 312s. There's jobs that are eight to five. It's such a, so, cause it's about people and it's about helping people and people live 24 seven. <laughs> so there is opportunity for all types of shifts and all type of jobs um, from Monday through Friday, eight to five, evening. I mean, there really is everything. I've worked every, I have literally worked every shift at one point in time in my career, I actually myself rather enjoy second shift. That was the shift that I particularly found that I liked. I don't do that now because I supervise people and I manage a program. Um, but the opportunity is there to find what really works for you. And that's where you have more opportunity because nine to five isn't for everybody. Monday through Friday, nine to five isn't for everybody. We all live different kind of lives. We enjoy different kind of things in life. Um, there is a huge emphasis on self-care, like what you can do. You're busy taking care of everybody else all the time, what you can do to take care of yourself. Um, so there's a small, so social work is huge, but there's still a small amount of social workers. So I know a lot, a lot, a lot of social workers in Dayton. And I think they take care of each other because they know, right? You help everybody all day. I want to make sure that you're taken care of. So I think, I think that's very helpful. You're in a helping profession with others um, to be able to reach out and kind of find what that work-life balance is. But most social workers, no offense, are women. I love to see men in social work, I, you know. Um, because half the population is men. We, need, we do need more men in social work for sure. Um, but they're, I mean, they have kids, they do their own thing. A lot of them have you know, side jobs or hobbies or just different things that they enjoy. And I don't see, um, I don't see a lot of people suffering because they feel like they have to work or they have to do. I mean, the job is, like my job is to make sure that they're not doing those things and I think that because I'm a social worker supervising social workers that I know. Um, so I don't think that's a huge problem. Yes. Any other questions? 
So I will tell you, if you are interested in the helping profession, so when I went to Carroll, we, our service hours were mandatory. And so I did my service hours at the House of Bread, which is the food pantry on the west side of Dayton, and with Catholic Social Services. And Catholic Social Services actually has a lot of volunteer programs. I actually did the elderly visiting program, and I did that through college as well. So if you are thinking that you were wanting to go into the helping profession, even if it's not social work, even if it's psychology, even if it's sociology or something like that, I would take the opportunity to volunteer somewhere so you can see a social work in action, but that you can also just see what helping people does. It, it'll make you happy. It will fulfill you in a way that other things necessarily won't. Um, they're always looking for volunteers and you can kind of test the water, so to speak, and say, okay, you know, working with the homeless population, that's my thing. I want to help these people like this, you know, I want, I have all these ideas. That's the thing is social work is ever evolving as the world evolves, social work evolves. And so if you have an idea on how to do it better, how to help people better, I mean, everybody's listening to those things. I mean, it's very, very evolving. Um, so taking an opportunity to volunteer somewhere um, or get a job somewhere, get a job, you know, in a nursing home. That's where I worked. I was 18, you know, and that's where, and I would also suggest, I'm a big proponent of working, she'll tell you, in college in particular, like I, how I actually got with Kettering was when I was in college, I said, oh gosh, I got to go somewhere where there's a lot more social workers so I can see and I can know and I can network and I can do these things. There's a lot of opportunities for college students in these social service agencies to, to work, even part-time. So I would also suggest that if you're going to work in college, which I do highly suggest, that you can find a place that employs social workers. So you can, you can see, so you're in a helping agency, so you can understand and kind of get your foot in the door, so to speak. And there's a lot of opportunity for that. I have another question. Yeah. Um, coming back down in the 10 minutes, um, is there anything that you use every day or in your career now or in your home life now that you learn here at Carroll? Is there anything that you take with you from Carroll into what you do on oh a regular gosh. basis? I am sure that there is, I think so. I think, I think the service thing, to be honest with you, I think the, the, do, the emphasis on service, and that's why I'm like, we serve people. Like we help people, but we really serve people. We, because we provide them with empowerment opportunities. Um, and so I think that was the biggest thing is just the mentality of service is that our goal in life is really to help other people, right? Is to be able to affect change, to be able to take whatever I know, whatever I've learned, whatever I've experienced, and help the next person. Um, and I think that starts when you're young, and I think that starts in high school when you are doing service projects, you are doing group things, you are going to mass, you are doing, you know, activities as groups for your sports or your after school activities and you're doing service projects. Um, so yes, I think service is probably, for me, the biggest, the biggest thing. I stayed connected to Catholic Social Services my entire career. That's where I started doing the elderly service program and where a lot of the volunteer opportunities are. talked about how like if you have an idea like within social work you can really help to like change um, a lot of things within social work and I've also heard that like you can like affect change in the government by like um, just like influencing policy makers. Like so there yes so there definitely is so there is 
and I would have never known this had I not been a social worker, to be honest, is there are, so there's boards and there's things at like every level of government. I actually sit on a board with the Adamus, which is the Addiction and Mental Health Board of Montgomery County. Um, and so you, you network, you meet people, but once you get connected, they ask you, right? Like, so you're in an agency that provides services to children and there's always issues with coming up with resources. There's issues with staffing. There's issues with law. There's issues with the ability to access things. There's issues with, all, with everything. I mean, there just is. And so providing that you are willing to speak up, you can. I mean, and I, I know lots of people, a lot of social workers that sit on a lot of city boards um, there's a lot of them there and actually like they're just up they're just up for renewal the boards in Montgomery County and I think there's like 53 of them I mean there's just so many I couldn't even I couldn't even believe it and you so there is opportunity and to have that knowledge of what actually needs to happen right like you're just not a banker I mean no offense to any bankers out there but they're not aware of like what the struggles are for people who live in a certain area where there's a food desert which means they don't have immediate access to a grocery store you know you can advocate for those things you can go to these council meetings and i know a lot a lot of social workers who do that kind of work um, in regards to mental health because i work for a large um core not core i work for a large hospital network in the state not I, but my boss goes to state meetings to talk about things that are in the Ohio Revised Code in regards to mental health. What police can do, what the hospital has to do, what the patient's rights are. He attends those meetings at the state level, so there is absolutely opportunity for that. In fact, I think one of the representatives from the Cleveland area, I can't think of her name off the top of my head, is a social worker. Yeah, so there definitely is. I think there's a senator from like Nevada or something at the federal level who is a social worker. You know, and I think that's amazing because we're typically the ones in the trenches and who see the everyday struggles of whatever is happening.